Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. This is Gina Tell. I am just here today to talk about topping your tables with fantasticness. So Doug Lico is a fabulous, fabulous designer and he has asked me to participate in his Instagram hop. And what that means is he's just hopping around from different designers and different people that are participating to make something from his new book. So he has three of these tabletastic books. This is the third one. And so this is the final one in his series. He has one, two, and three, and they're filled with fun ideas for table toppers and table runners. And you can even add more blocks to make some of these quilts if you wanted to. Um, smaller baby quilts and that kind of thing. Really, really lots of fun ideas. And so today I'm gonna show you a couple of quilts that I made from this book. I couldn't decide on one, so I had to make two. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm gonna show you the finished toppers right now. And then later in the video, I'm gonna give a couple of tips on how to make one of them. Cause one of them could be viewed as a little bit more challenging, more difficult, and I don't want you to think that they are. So they're really very easy and they're well written and they're easy to understand and I know you can do it. So um, I'm gonna start off with the first one that I made. So I'm gonna step back and show you the whole thing and then I'll come back forward so you can hear me better to, um, to talk about some of the details. So this one is called, and I'm also gonna put my glasses on. So this one is called Somerset. And so Somerset is a pattern that is just one big piece in the center, and then it has a border all the way around, and then it has blocks, which are consist of two pieces and then one piece and then two pieces and then one piece. So that's each, that's a block. And so you're just going around to create this fun zipper kind of effect. And it's really cute. And so this one was very simple to make. I did it in a very short time. And so I did a stripe binding because I love stripe binding and I did hand binding. So you can see my little mitered corners. Um, I love to do hand binding and so on the back, I just did a blue with stars. And then there's the little truck. And so on the batting, I did an 80-20 batting on the bottom, and then I did a wool batting over the top of it. And so it's thicker and it makes, I'm gonna turn it kind of sideways so you can see the texture. It's, a, it's very fluffy. So the wool just kind of makes it have a little bit of some fluff and in the light, it really looks pretty. And so how I made these, I decided that I had some pan, I had a panel and I've linked it down below and I also have it linked in my blog. But the panel is a Riley Blake panel and it comes with four different pieces and I just cut them into fours. And so I just took one of them and made that topper. So you could very easily make four toppers and you could gift some or you could put some on multiple tables and areas in your room, um, in your house. And so these are just, just small little, so this is a great way to use a panel. And um, there's a lot of panels. I also linked several other panels. There's a ton of panels. Panels are really kind of fun and in right now. And so you can take, this idea and make it into a Halloween or a baby if you had some kind of a panel or you could print pictures and make a, you know, make a small quilt. So lots of fun ideas for this. So I just wanted to show you that this is a great pattern to use if you have any panels laying around that you don't know what to do with, but you think they're really cute. And so again, this is Somerset. And this one is on, let's see, I think this was on page 92. Yes, so these are what he's show, what Doug has shown in the book. And then, like I said, the pattern's really easy to understand, but that's what they look like in the book. And so the other one that I am getting ready to do, to show you, is called Queensbury, and it is fabulous. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna back up and show you the full thing. So 
So this one is small. It's only 26 by 28, I think. This one's on page 82, I believe. Yes, it's 24 by 26 and it's called Queensbury. And so it is a small one and you use templates to make this one. So some people think the templates are a little template, excuse me, are a little difficult or maybe just the idea of this looks challenging or hard. It's really not. I finished it in a very short time. I worked on the top of it in one day and then I quilted it on a different day and bound it. Um, but so if you want to know how to make this, I did a short tutorial at the end of this video to kind of show how I chose the pieces and how I laid it out. You can make this with a, um, with a layer cake. I got this um, Nantucket Summer is the fabric line here. It's a new collection by Bonnie and Camille. And I guess it's just technically Camille now, but um, I just got this in a sew sampler box and I thought, oh, I bet you that will look really cute. And so um, later in this video, if you wanna watch how I put it together, I did some tips on how to make your points match and some of those things. So um, I also, if you turn it just right in the light, I used a pantograph that is called, um, I think it's some kind of flower, corn flower, I can't remember exactly. I'll, I'll put it down in the bottom. Um, but I wanted it to look good from any of the sides of the table. So if you're sitting at the table, I didn't want your de the design to be upside down. So that's that and it gives a really, really pretty texture and it, you can see it better if I put it in the light like that. But, and then I just did the stripe binding and I didn't even cut the binding on the bias. I just slightly folded it on some on the corners. Um, so it doesn't, it looks fine. I just cut regular two and a half inch binding. So, so that's that, isn't it cute? Doug Lico did good stuff. So um, I would encourage you to buy the book. It's a great book. Any of the books are great. Have all three of them. Um, but again, I've linked them down below so you can find them easily. And Doug has invited, I think, 18 different designers to sew along with him. So there's lots of fun things to, to see. There'll be lots of inspiration from other people. So you want to definitely check out Doug Lico and um, he will be linking all of the people that are sewing along um, on his channel. So you can, you can check all those out. But so anyway, if you wanna learn how to make this, hang on just a second. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna talk about with this super fun topper, this is from the Tabletastic Three by Doug Lico. There's three of these books. This is the third and final book. And what I have chosen to do is to make the um, Queensbury one. And so I am using a layer cake and I'm not gonna give you details on the cutting exactly because you need to buy the book. Um, but this pattern is using a template. And so what I do to make a template is I just put a piece of paper down. I'm always dropping stuff. Okay, so I just put a piece of paper down and then I use my pen and I just mark a little dot on the very top and all the corners so that you can just see through and trace through. There's the dot, there's the dot. Okay, and so what I do then is I just take a ruler and I connect them. And so you just take a ruler and connect your dots. And once you've done that, then I take them and cut them out with a pair of scissors. And I'm not gonna do all of it because um, you get the general idea. Um, so then you're just gonna take your scissors and cut that out. And then once I get those shapes cut out, then I just place the shapes on top of a cardboard. This came in the layer cake, actually. So these are great. I save these. I keep a bunch of these in, uh, in, in my stash over here. And so then I just take the shape. And once you cut it out, just set it down, trace it out again, and then cut it out. And so now you have your two little templates and I just take a pen and mark on there the, the seam allowance. 
so that's really super easy so now you have those and then on the the cutting you're basically just going to take your strips you're going to cut your layer cake according to the instructions and you're going to cut your strips and then you can lay your strips on top of each other and cut multiples at a time and then you're just going to cut it and cut it and that's really all you have to do it's super simple and then once we get them all cut then they're going to look just like that so here we're this one just uses a couple of different shapes that are super easy and then i'm going to show you how to put these shapes together and you'll have i literally probably can finish this in a day um it's not hard at all it's very very straightforward the um the instructions are great and um, it's a it's a fun sew. So I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine and show you how to sew these couple of pieces together. We're gonna make a strip, and then I'll show it to you up on the design wall. Okay, so I have mine laid out on the design wall, and I'm gonna show you how to um, sew one strip together, and then I'll show you what it looks like on the design wall. But I decided where I wanted to place my fabrics up on the design wall. That way it's easy to just take the row and then I just stack them on top of each other and sew them and then I'll show you that in a second. So um, first we're going to sew them together. Okay, so I am on my one I am on this row right here. Okay, so we're gonna take this piece and this piece. And the way that it goes is your little, your little chop on one end, it needs to lay right on top. And so if you, if you put it way back here, it's obviously not in the right place. And if you put it way in the front, it's not this, it's not right. So you want to line up, you want to line up where this end and this end, where they both, they both meet. Same way with this one. And so you're going to sew right where the two fabrics um, intersect, right there. So I'm going to put my little thing on it so you can see. So we're going to sew a line from this corner all the way to that corner. And so it's just important to put your, not to have your piece on top going too, too far up or too far down. And that is what it is going to look like when it is sewn. And then you're just going to fold it over and it's going to be perfect. Okay, we're going to do the next piece. I'm going to get my iron. I have it right here. I have it right here next to me on my little TV tray. Okay, so now my angle goes like that. And these are the same way. You just are going to leave the space right there. And the space right there. So your stitch line is coming out where your two fabrics intersect. And so when I'm over on the design wall, I just lay them on top so I know what order they need to go and I don't pin. So that's that. We're just going to leave it like that. Nope. I moved it a little bit. There we go. And I like to press in between each one because I just think it makes it look better.
So then you can see it is creating your little quarter inch for when you sew your rows together. So once you get the hang of how to uh, how to line it up, it's really it's really easy sewing. There's no corners to trim off, or there's there's nothing there's nothing that is gonna complicate it. It's just sewing the pieces together in rows. I was just checking my pattern to make sure I didn't have them out of order. Okay. And you'll see why I'm doing all these different fabrics in a minute. Why I'm sewing them all together. So that one, we have our perfect little quarter inch right there. Alrighty, and here's our last piece. See, now we've made sure that you've got your quarter inch right there too. So there's our, there's our little strip. And so this pattern is only, I think it's, let me look and see. It's only 24 by 26. So it's pretty small and it's, but it's really showy. Okay. I'm going to move the camera over here to show it to you on the design wall. Okay, it's up on my design wall, and this is how I started out. So these rows down here are not sewn together, and two of my pieces have fallen off the design wall here. Um, but this is how I decided my layout for the fabrics and where I wanted my colors to go. So we just sewed this row right here, and so I need to put my white pieces on either side, but I can do that later. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this one next and I'm just gonna stack it like that. And then I need to get the one from the floor that fell. And so that's how I stack it when I go to the machine. So I just stack it and then I put it on my little um, design board and then I carry it over to my machine. And this one right here, I'm gonna cut so my fabric, so my stripes are all going up. Um, so I'm gonna fix that guy. But that is what it looks like, and it's really, really cute. I'm a big fan. Okay, I wanted to talk about pinning for just a minute. So I pressed all of my pieces all to one side, so they're not nesting, and that's okay with me. So when I pin, I just take them and I pin them right along, right along the seam like that. And then I go to the next one and I just put the pin right in. <clears throat> and you can tell that it goes right in at the same place on the other side. So this one, there's going to be a little bit more bulk, but I'm going to press them open and I've already pressed several of them of the other strips and they look perfect. So I'm just going to show you 
a little trick that I do when I'm pinning because I don't pin very often. Um, I pin when I do my rows like this, but I don't usually pin a lot when I'm doing my, when I'm piecing my blocks. And I usually just flip and then use my fingernail. Okay, so one of the things that I, when once I get done pinning, you can see the little ripples a little bit. Not, not so much on this one, but um, what I do is I take it to the iron right now before I stitch it out and I press it. And so I'm going to show you on, I'm going to show you on my, uh, on my, um, little pressing mat. So this is what I use over here. And before I get ready to go and sew it, I just put my iron down. I do not push it. I just place it flat on top of there, use these glass head pins so you can press right over them. And so I just lift it up and move it. I do not just, that's all I'm doing with the iron because I don't want it to move anything. And I find that it really flattens and makes things really easy to now go sew. So I'm gonna show you. Let me put the camera back. Just as I approach the needle, I take it out. But I find that pressing, even when I'm doing any kind of any kind of piecing, I often press right on top of the pins right before, and so it gives your area it's nice and flat. And then what I'm going to do is go through and bring my little trash bin over, and then I'm, oops, I'm going to trim those dog ears. Just be careful that you don't get any of your fabric that you want. Okay. And some of those you can trim off if if you just want to. And so now it looks, it looks great. All right, I'm gonna go press it. Okay, we're on the last stretch. I just have to do the top strip and the bottom strip. And I need to obviously press it. <laughs> 